Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. It is so good to be with you in this space this week. This week we are reading from Parshat Vayechi. This is the last Parsha of the book of Genesis. It's a long book. We've had a lot of Parshiot. And here we are at the, the last portion before we move into the book of Exodus. When we reach the last reading, the very last words of a book of Torah, we recite as a whole community, Chazak, Chazak, Venit, Chazek. Be strong, be strong, and let us be strengthened. I really love this phrase because it's something that we only say in community. We're reading the book together, and this is the moment we've been like waiting for it. We've been, it's so close, and we're ready, and we love those moments of transition, and this is what we get to say, wow, Chazak, we were strong. We made it to this point. Chazak, we will be strong beginning the next phase. Benit Chazak, and here we are. We strengthen each other through being together in these moments of transition. And so here we are at this moment of transition as the week turns to Shabbat. And we wish each other strength and feel the strength that we each give each other by being in community, being in each other's presence. We take that moment of strength, we lend our voices to it as we continue to sing together, welcoming in this beautiful transition, this beautiful moment, Shabbat. We'll be strong together if our voices rise as one, both now and at something special that's gonna happen later tonight called the Kumsitz. And I'm not gonna spoil any more than that. This is one of the melodies that we're gonna have there. It might be new to you. We're gonna go through the journey together and it'll be beautiful. I love 
singing. But before we do, can we do this? Let's introduce ourselves to our neighbors, and then we'll light the Shabbat candles. So uh, if you can say hello to those around you, even if it requires standing up, giving a greeting, and then we'll welcome Shabbat. You ready, you guys? Hey, guys. All right. Now we are one community in the sanctuary and on Zoom ready to light the candles. So Emma and Sam, if you'll light the candles together. And let's join together the candle blessing. I believe in the prayer book can be found on page 123. job tomorrow afternoon leading us in prayer mazel tov to your families let's now continue in song and celebration of shabbat welcome to the sanctuary cantor <laughs> cantor zell just returned from vacation so we welcome <laughs> you back nice it's and good to be here <laughs> I'm going to remove my mask for just a second and step back, Rabbi. Beloved, come to meet the bride. Beloved, come to greet Shabbat. Shamor v'zachor b'dibur echad. Keep and remember a single command. Hishmi anu. God is one. 
God is all. if you're able to greet the Sabbath bride. Call to worship the Barhu, page 146. Adonai, 
take our seats once again, place our feet firmly on the ground, feeling the earth beneath us as we continue with the word Shema Yisrael, reminding us that God is all around. Shema say that this Friday night we are going to listen to a composition of Noah Aronson to the words Emet Emuna, which can be found on page 156. This prayer that brings us from the words of the Shema and the biblical text to the words of redemption and Micha Mocha. And so let's join together page 156. What can you keep and what can you lose? What do you feel and what is your truth? What's your belief and what is your proof? Oh, 
dans ce corps. So here we are. We made it to the center of our prayer service together. The part that asks us to open up our lips so that we can declare the praises that we have within our hearts and we can declare them out loud. If you're joining us on Zoom, we invite you to spread some joy into our chat room. Whatever goodness you are feeling, you can feel free to share it there. And for those of us in the sanctuary, I invite you to rise. We'll join on page 164 for these sacred words. Adonai Sephatai Tivta Viagi Tehilate Adonai Sephatai Tivta Open up our lips that we may praise your name. Open up our hearts that we may be our. I invite you to take some time privately for your own words of reflection. words of our hearts and the words of our meditations be acceptable. Let's write together on the bottom of page 180, the middle stanza, Yehi Luratzon. Yehi Luratzon, im refi, im refi, veheg yon libi lefanecha. Yehi Luratzon, im refi, im refi, Veg yon libi lefanecha. Adonai tzuri, Adonai tzuri, Adonai tzuri vegoho ali. Adonai tzuri, Adonai tzuri, Adonai tzuri vegoho ali. Yehi hule ratzon, im refi, im refi, vehegyon libi lefanecha. Yehi hule ratzon, 
Im Refi, im Refi, Verheg ich all Liebe, Lefane, Adonai zu dir, Adonai zu dir, Adonai zu dir, Vergo Ali, Adonai zu dir, Adonai zu dir, Adonai zu dir, Vergo Ali. We take a moment now in the midst of the peace that is settling onto us this Shabbat to think of those in our hearts whom we wish an extra measure of peace and of wholeness this Shabbat. If there is someone you are thinking of who is in need of healing, healing of mind, healing of body, healing of spirit, if there is someone you are holding in your heart today, we invite you to rise so that we may come and hear their name in the sanctuary and on Zoom, we invite you to put their names in the chat box so that we may think of them and send them prayers as a community. We wish for all of them a refuash lema, a speedy return to wholeness. The words of Misha Berach are on page 371. <laughs> As we do each week, we celebrate the joys, the simchas that we have to share. We're going to start this week with birthdays. <laughs> I didn't even have to mention it myself. <laughs> 89 years. Happy birthday, Jerry. Mazel tov. Yes. Same number? No. <laughs> Happy birthday. Mazel tov. And to those of you on Zoom, I see Julie is raising her hand. I have my computer here right in front of me, so I can see all of you on Zoom. Cantor Zell is going to take a quick look. Any more birthdays this week? I know Susan Solomon is anticipating a birthday this week. Susan, I see you on Zoom as well. So mazel tov to all of you. We also have some occasions, anniversaries of love to share. Anyone married this week in December here in the sanctuary? I see the Drowers online celebrating. I think the magic number is 53 years wow. of marriage. So mazel tov to Nancy and to Don. I also want to send a mazel tov to the Shram family as Bud and Peggy welcomed a grandson their son Andrew, and we welcome Elliot Schramm 
to our community. And I see that Helene Kress is also online with us this evening. She celebrated a big, momentous occasion in her professional career. She was named, she was given a Lifetime Achievement Award by the National Association of Social Workers. So mazel tov to you, Helene. I see you, I'm sending you a wave as well. So for all of these occasions and milestones, we celebrate with joy and love and join together in the we world. Also, Rabbi, I think we have some bar this weekend. We as do well. have the mitzvah. I didn't even ask. I see, well, we already saw Sam <laughs> and we already saw Emma, but we'll also say a mazel tov to Eli you got as it. well. Thank and you for that. Safe return from college. Oh, and let's we'll say it again, Rabbi. Safe return from college. Safe return from college. I think we can absolutely all join together in this bracha. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehecheanu v'kimanu v'higianu Azman hazeh Baruch Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. I first want to say um, that I have felt an abundance of love and gratitude from this community. Um, it fills my heart. Um, I certainly share it back to this community that has given me so much um, over the last eight and a half years. And so, hi, Shabbat shalom. <laughs> So on the heels of Hanukkah, hey, <laughs> and here's, wow. on the heels of Hanukkah, and with the winter solstice next week, I have remained thinking a great deal about the nature of light as it peers through darkness. So much so that I dedicated the class I taught last Monday evening to one of the few weekly rituals that specifically occur in the dark, Havdalah. In our learning that night, we explored an extraordinary text from Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer, a compilation of rabbinic teachings and stories which were published in Italy around 8.30 of the Common Era. Now, typically, Havdalah which is a ritual separating Shabbat from the, from the rest of the week, is done on Saturday evening with wine and spices and candles, or candle with multiple wicks. And this text teaches us how we can recite Havdalah if one of those core ritual items is not available to us. It says in the event we don't have wine, forget the wine and use the candle for the blessing. If we don't have the candle, we should use the light of the stars for a blessing. And if it's cloudy, it's all good. Leah, yeah, it's okay. If it's cloudy and we can't see the stars, we should lift a stone up from the ground. And if we don't have a stone, we should simply bless on what we have, which is so incredible. Havdalah is part of the way that we offer gratitude for the gift of Shabbat and for the ability to take its beauty with us throughout the week. Being grateful for the blessing in our lives then is simply about having the ability to bless with what we have. Now, it's hard to believe that it's December 17th, and that 2022 
is just two weeks away. At the same time, it feels like January 1st of this year, of 2021, was both yesterday and years ago at the same time. On that Shabbat, almost a year ago, before an insurrection, before mass vaccine availability, before more horrific weather disasters, before Bernie Sanders mittens, <laughs> I reflected on the same Torah portion that we read this week, Vayachi. On that Shabbat, I explored the nature of time, thinking about the words of Jonathan Larson's rent, that each minute be counted, explored, measured, and blessed with pur purposeful intention which I believe we did in 2020 with great intentionality and meaning. And so in 2021, I hope we can consider how we express and how we have expressed our gratitude and shape our blessings based on what we have. Now, while this week's Parsha is called Vayechi, and he lived, it's actually about the death of our ancestor Jacob, and at the end, the death of his son Joseph, as this Parsha draws to a close, so does the narrative that gave birth to the legacy of our ancestors. And next week, we open a new book with new characters in a new Egypt that is vastly different from the Egypt where they live now. In a few chapters, we'll read how a new pharaoh rose up in Egypt to rule one who didn't know Joseph and who enslaved the Israelite people. But as I think about the enduring qualities of our text this week, I think about all the blessings that appear. Overt blessings from Jacob to his children and grandchildren, Ephraim and Menashe, and less obvious ones that come in the form of brothers reuniting and joining together to bury their father in peace and in love. I think about how this Parsha teaches us to bless with what we have. And so in what I consider one of the most remarkable scenes in the Torah, it happens in this week's Parsha, and it centers deeply on the enduring power of blessing with what we have. For those of you who have studied with me throughout the years, you've certainly heard me share this favorite midrash of mine. As he is about to die, Jacob calls for his sons to join him at the foot of his bed. He then offers a blessing for each child, expressing his true feelings as a father for each son, regardless of the nature of their individual relationship. And in some of the blessings even, Jacob expresses profound disappointment in a child for a specific action here or there along the way. And our sages respond to this unusual series of blessings by offering us a midrash of this moment. The rabbi said that this was when the words of the Shema were first spoken. In this midrash, we learn that the blessings come from a distraught Jacob, that at the time of his death, he does not want to leave this world without reassurance that his children will uphold his meaningful relationship with God and carrying on those lessons and morals and values that he tried so diligently to establish for himself and his family. And his children, recognizing this through the nature of their father's blessings, reflect back to him arguably the most powerful language in our tradition, the Shema. And they do this as a form of assurance and blessing to Jacob. According to the Midrash, the children say to their father, Shema Yisrael, listen Israel, which we know is another name for Jacob. Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Adonai is our God. Adonai is one. As if to say, yes, dad, your God is our God too. And that God is one. And Jacob, being incredibly relieved to hear this, replies, Baruch Shem Kevod Machuto Leolam Va'ed. Praise be God's name forever and ever. In saying this to their father, Jacob's children offered a blessing to him with what they had in that moment, compassion and kindness, and an openness to reconnecting with family. And that was enough. And they didn't need some grand gesture or ritual. They offered these words of blessing simply with what they had in the moment, their love for their father and connection with one another. Now, admittedly, I am a fan of end-of-year lists. Anybody else a fan of end-of-year lists? A few of you. Spotify tells me 
that this year I was among the top 1% of all Taylor Swift listeners. <laughs> and unremarkably, the soundtrack from Frozen 2 was not far behind. I like to see what gave meaning and purpose to individuals and journalists, to photographers and others. It's a reflection on who we are as a nation and how we might have been shaped by the world around us. For me, one of the most impactful of these lists are photos of the year. They, in the most visceral ways, help us to remember what we have witnessed. They are historic moments and ordinary ones, ones we still remember and others already forgotten. But the ones I'm most drawn to are of people doing heroic things in their daily routine. Because sometimes just getting out of bed is heroic in the face of, doing all, in the face of all the things that are going on in the world and, the, and what people individually are directly facing. And perhaps I'm drawn to these photos because to capture them, you literally, well at least with film, you literally have to let in dark, lightness. You literally have to let in light to darkness. On the New York Times list, there's a remarkable photo, that's actually a patchwork of photos of people and their faces living their everyday lives. A courier on a bike, a manicurist at a salon, a fishmonger preparing a fish, and a dad offering a hug to his son. And these photos remind me that what we bring to the world, what we bring to our families and our community, what we bring to God. It is on these things in our lives that we can offer a blessing. And yet, it can feel simplistic to say, oh sure, I'll just offer a blessing and gratitude for what I have. When things are hard, it can still be difficult. And even what we have to say may not be enough to give us the strength to feel satisfied with these blessings. There are times when fear gets in the way, when darkness gets in the way, when unknown and uncertainty cloud our ability to even see the stones of blessing in front of us. And even when we only see the cloud, when the fog prevents us from seeing the stones, it is then that we turn inward, finding the source of blessing and goodness within us. Sometimes blessings are even easy to notice and sometimes it seems impossible. Sometimes there's great light in our lives and sometimes darkness is much more present. Sometimes we can grasp the stone and other times it slips through our fingers. Being able to bless with what we have requires us to be open to the different instruments and forms of blessings in our lives, in coffee and connection, in friends and community, and in health. And so just as God is open to whatever blessings that we offer, as we reflect on this year and look forward to the year ahead, may we be able to cultivate a sense of openness to find the myriad blessings in and around all that we have. Shabbat Shalom. I'm reminded of a beautiful blessing, a prayer offered by Jewish songwriter Batya Levine. And she offers these words, which are simple yet powerful, and give us an awareness of what we might be able to experience within us and immediately around us. May I be empty and open to receive the light May I be empty and open to receive. May I be full 
and open to receive the light. May I be full and open to receive. May I be empty and open to receive the light. May I be empty and open to receive. May I be full and open to receive the light. May I be full and open to receive. May I be empty and open to receive the light. May I be empty and open to receive. May I be full. May I be full and open to receive the light. May I be full and open to receive. May I be empty and open to receive the light. May I be empty and open to receive. May I be full. May I be full and open to receive the light. May I be full and open to receive. May I be empty. May I be empty. May I be open to receive the light. May I be empty and open to receive. May I be full. May I be full. May I be full. Receive the light, may I be full and open to receive. Later this evening, we'll join together in a kumzitz, an opportunity to come and to sit and to sing. And we all know the power of joining voices together or perhaps sitting alone and hearing the sound of your own voice resonate within your body in the safety and the comfort of your own home. So my blessing is that you'll join us and be open to receive the light that has to come when we sit and sing and are present together. Amen. We turn now to words of blessing, words of memory. As we honor the legacies of those who have come before us and take time now with the support of the community around us to lift up the names of those whom we are mourning, um, either in a recent period of mourning or those whom we are remembering the yard site, the anniversary of their death in this week. Our community is thinking of uh, Phyllis Cohen, the mother of Leslie Prouda, and Martin Saltzman, the father of Juliet Christ in this uh, in this recent period of mourning. If there's anyone in the sanctuary who's remembering somebody, uh, whether someone in the period of Shloshim of the last 30 days, or honoring a parent from the last year, Shana, or the yard site, the one year anniversary of someone you're remembering, let us lift up their names now. I've also been asked to read the names of Selma Roberts, mother of Barbara Miller, George Roberts, father of Barbara Miller, and Ezra Vogel, brother of Faye Wolfgang. Let's all rise in support of the mourners in our midst. We turn to page 598 for words of mourners Kaddish. Yitz Gadal, Yitz Kadash, Shemei Rabba. Amen. V'yalma, Divra, Chirute, V'yamlich, Malchute. V'chaye Chon, Uv'yomei Chon, Uv'chaye Dechol Beit Yisrael. Ba'agala uvizman kariv v'imru amen. Yehesh me raba mevarach le'olam ulame amaya. Yitzbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnase. V'yitzhadar v'yitzhale v'yitzhalal shmei d'kudusha v'yichu. Ve'ela min kol birchata v'shirata. Tushbachata v'nechamata. Da'amiran ba'alma v'imru amen. Yehesh lama raba min shemaya, v'chayim aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael, v'imru, amen. 
Oseh Shalom Bimromal, Hu Yaseh Shalom, Alenu ve al Kol Yisrael, ve al Kol Yashvei Tevel, ve Imru. Amen. Yaseh Shalom, Yaseh Shalom, Shalom Alenu ve al Kol Yisrael, Yaseh Shalom, Yaseh Shalom, Shalom Aleinu ve al Kol Yisrael. Announcements. What do we have? <laughs> okay. Um, so this evening, please, as you've heard many times, we have a contest that's going to be amazing. So all you have to do is just stay right here. It's very simple. Um, we will, if, you, if you'd like to head on out, there will be um, oneg you can grab on your way. Otherwise, we promise we'll give you some um, after the kumsitz. Um, coming up, just looking a little bit ahead, next week, which is the 24th, and the week following, which is the 31st, we will be all on Zoom, um, also in gratitude to the many people who make these services happen, including Max and Maddie and Emily and Stephen and all of our amazing musicians and our custodians. We want them to be able to also take a little bit of uh, a break. So we'll all be together on Zoom uh, for the next two weeks. And for all the other things, there's a million things going on. Check your email. You know where to find stuff. So um, <laughs> with that, with that. So let's do this. Um, we're going to make Kiddush and Motzi after the Kumsitz. But let's close together. And then we're going to move some chairs so that we can sit in a circle and sing together if you're going to stay. Could we do this? I have a, it wormed into my head. May I be open? Did it Empty? happen? It was, it's been in my head for like months. So can we close <laughs> like, with like building it in you tempo it. and volume? I, and then ooh, maybe transition? Yeah. I don't know if everyone's aware, but Rabbi Sissenwein has another life as a producer. <laughs> <laughs> He's really good at these things. <laughs> it's in my head. Here we go. May I be empty and open to receive the light. May I be empty and open to receive. I like it. May I be full and open to receive the light. May I be full and open to receive. May I be empty. May I be empty and open to receive the light. May I be empty and open to receive. May to receive. May I be empty, I be empty, and open to receive the light. May I be empty, and open to receive. May I be full, May I be full, and open to receive the light. May I be full, and open to receive. May I be empty, May I be empty and open to receive the light. May I be empty and open to receive. Come closer. May I be full and open to receive the light. May I be full and open to receive. May I be empty. And open to receive the light. May I be empty and open to receive. We're getting closer now. May I be full and open to receive the light. May I be full and open to receive. Let's make these seats full. May I be empty and open to receive the light. May May I be empty and open to receive. May All I right, Ryan. Good Shabbos, everybody. We are going to sing. Do you want to share what Kumsitz is? What it's from? Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're not on, I don't think. But you're not. We're not on. Do you have? Now a, I'm on. There we go. Hello. 
Shabbat Shalom. It's really great to see all of you here in the building, and it's great to be joined with those of you who are on Zoom. Really happy we are here. A kum sit is just an opportunity to sit and to be present, literally just to sit and to be. So I invite you this evening for the next little bit of time that we're here together to just be, come as you are. We are going to sing many songs. We're going to share a few stories, a few teachings. And I invite you to just be here, to bring your full self as you can. We are joined here in lots of different universes. Some of us are here in the building, and some of us are secluded in our rooms on Zoom, um, where we can't technically hear you. However, we know that within the Zoom universe and how it all works, we can hear you. We can. Because when we all lift our voices together, no matter where we are, we're bringing them together in intention. And so this evening, I just invite you to be settled, to bring yourself as you are with the joys and the oys that you have. And we're just going to sing and share some stories and then go out with to be. So let's take a moment with, for, with some deep, intentional breath, get ourselves settled, and we'll begin. Yeah. 
our sages teach, that long ago, in the days of the temple, there was beautiful music that accompanied every service. And that music came from the voices of choirs, people singing, and also many, many instruments. And among these instruments, there was a flute. It was a simple flute. It was made from a reed, a little reed with holes. But it made the most beautiful sound. It was pure, it was clear. And the king loved the sound of this flute. And so he wanted to lift it up even higher. And so the king ordered that the flute be plated with gold. And they sent it to the finest craftsmen, the finest artisans. They plated this reed flute in a fine layer of gold. And when it came back to the temple, it shone in the light, and the flautist brought it to his lips, and he played, and it was still a beautiful sound, but it wasn't quite as clear, it wasn't quite as pure. It was okay. And the sages teach that in the days of the temple, there was a symbol made of bronze that made a beautiful sound that went straight to the soul. And one day, someone dropped it got a little banged up. And they sent it to the finest craftspeople in Alexandria and Egypt to fix it. But when it came back, it didn't play quite as well as it did when it was broken. Sometimes having something that's just a little broken or just a little simple, that's what makes the music so beautiful. We bring our whole selves our broken selves, our simple selves, all the parts of ourselves, the music that we make, that goes straight to God. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where will my help come from?
picture. Oh, so beautiful. I don't know if they can see me on Zoom, but uh, you got a heart tap. Um, many people may not know that the first time I saw, met Ryan in a sacred space was singing around the campfire at my nephew's wedding a few years ago. And there's nothing like singing around a campfire. The power of collective song at midnight at your nephew's wedding. But this is a very close second. So I thank you. There is something powerful about song. I guess it's no surprise that in the Torah, the happiest moment when the sea parted and the future opened in a way that they never expected and they were able to walk through. What did they do? They sang. As Yashir, they sang a song. And so I want to thank you for uh, bringing this new custom to our community. I think our final piece is, what is it? Psalm 47. Psalm. Psalm. Beautiful. Let us sing. Let us rejoice together. We're going to really lean into this one. This is Psalm 47. My teacher, Rabbi Evan Leader, opens up his tefillah each morning with these words, with this melody. as a way to just really awaken within him whatever needs to be known. As Rabbi Harper said, with all of the joys and with some of the brokenness, we can bring all of that here. This is safe amongst our words of song. Zamru Elohim Zameru, let us sing. Zamru Lenalkin Zameru, to sing to our king, our ruler. Zamru Elohim Zameru Zamru Lemalkeinu Zameru Zamru Elohim Zameru Zamru Lemalkeinu Zameru Sing that a few more times. Zamru Elohim Zameru Zamru Lemalkeinu Zameru Zamru Elohim Zameru Zamru Lemalkeinu Zameru Second part Zamru Elohim Zameru Zamru le malkinu zameru. Zamru Elohim zameru. Zamru le malkinu zameru. Together. Zamru Elohim zameru. Zamru le malkinu zameru. Zamru Elohim Zameru Zamru Lemalkeinu Zameru Do you know all your parts? I invite you to get lost in whatever the melody brings for you this evening. Zamru
Tradition and Mercy. But before we do, I'm going to put you on the spot. Great. Like it's a campfire. I'm ready for it. <laughs> How about a song from the secular canon mm -hmm. that brings that sense of celebration to God? Any song that moves your spirit. Ooh. I saw you sing many. Mm -hmm. And then we'll make Kiddush celebrating our day. But this is so beautiful, I don't want it to end. I'll what do you got? Forever. That's the problem. <laughs> Just need that tune. That's the eye contact. That's that's like Can we figure it out? You got it? I think I know what you're doing. You know what I'm doing? Is there a train? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Rabbi Curtis Mayfield. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need no ticket. We just come on board. We do it together. People get ready. There's a train at coming. Don't need no ticket. You just get on board. Cause all you need is faith to hear the Jesus come. Kiddush. Josh, you want to hold the Kiddush cup? Yeah, I got it. Let's do it. Can we remind people of something before we do Kiddush, Rabbi? Whatever you'd like. If you can hear me, and if you're with us on Zoom also, <laughs> this is going to happen again. Sure is. On January 14th, which is actually Shabbat Shira, a Shabbat of song in which we sing those words that Rabbi Sisson referenced, Az Yashir Moshe. Um, and so I hope you'll come back. We're also going to be singing some songs um, commemorating Dr. Martin Luther King. So there will be plenty more of this, and I'm really grateful to you, Ryan. So thank you. Please join us again. Cool. Lev, you see that cup of juice? Hold that high in the air. If you need the words, 128, I believe? 123. 123? I, job, I announced the wrong paper. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
Take a sip. You can drop the mask for a sec. Take a sip. L'chaim, l'chaim. Let's uncover that beautiful challah. Perfect. Lev, you get to be the one that gets to drop their mask if you're allowed to eat challah. <laughs> Gluten or what? So everyone, Shabbat Shalom. There should be food if they left any outside for us, the early crowd. Good Shabbos.